It's Aloha Wednesday. Gonna swim, bike, and run Rondé. What? Cause it's breakfast with Bob. And Pacho Man, everyone. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt, brought to you by Master Spas as Fuels Go Longer, Hoka Let's Fly, DeBoer Wetsuits, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, original triathlon brand, Quintana Roo, Premier Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, three-time Ironman Australia champion, Laura Siddle joins us. How about a round of applause for Laura? How are you Thanks. doing, Laura? I'm good, Bob. How are you? Thanks for having me back on. I'm, I'm quite pleased that everybody stayed because I, when I saw the schedule and I saw that I was after Chelsea, I was like, yes, there's going to be a big crowd for Chelsea and hopefully everyone stayed. So thank you for everyone who stayed. <laughs> I appreciate you all. So this has been a really tough year, <laughs> right? Yeah. To say the least. You do Ironman, you're at Ironman Brazil. You got hit by a car during a race. Do you remember anything? Uh, not of the accident, no. I, so yeah, I was racing Ironman Brazil. I was at the end of, coming to the end of the first lap. So the last thing I remember was looking down at my Garmin and seeing 85 kilometers, so 5K to the turnaround. Uh, I do remember seeing a vehicle on, in the shoulder, uh, but didn't think anything of it. The next thing I remember is I was on the other side of the road, sitting there, the ambulance was already there. Helmet was off. Uh, I remember seeing my bike on the grass, but looked okay. Uh, funnily enough, all the water bottles were like lined up on the road, all very neatly. It's very weird. Um, and I remember then I knew exactly where I was. I knew I was in a race. I could tell them, you know, I was heading back to transition. But the actual incident of what happened, I have no recollection, which I, th I think is probably a good thing. Yeah, I would give you nightmares if you, yeah. if you had that. Yeah. What were the injuries? So on, on one extent, I was really lucky, um, nothing broken, uh, some random road rash and things like that. But I obviously, I was found unconscious on the road, um, but obviously luckily was breathing. Um, so they took me to hospital and did a scan on my brain and I had a brain bleed. Um, so I had to stay in overnight, but was fortunate that the next day when they scanned again, there was no, um, further it hadn't deteriorated further so they didn't have to operate and i was able to be discharged um and i was able to be cleared to fly home the next day or back to boulder but still we're talking head injury we're <laughs> yeah. talking dizziness we're talking nausea you're talking about all the things that come along with that yeah it was weird i, I in one element I, I was really lucky i i mean obviously for me a brain bleed it was all new i didn't know what that was what that meant um, yeah, I had sort of this, these headachey, but then I was really lucky from a, I didn't have sort of light sensitivity, noise sensitivity. I wasn't having to sort of wrap myself up in a dark room afterwards. I got back to Boulder. Uh, I wasn't allowed to drive and I wasn't allowed to do any training. So that was a complete turnaround from going to, you know, 30 hours a week of training leading into a race. To zero. Probably being kind of in... I realize it now in hindsight how fit I was for that race in May. I didn't realize it at the time. You never do. You don't appreciate that uh, until it's taken away. And I then went to, yeah, zero hours. Um, just being told to rest, just being told to go walking. But even that was limited to sort of 20 minutes. Um, and I don't think, like, that's, I've, I've always done sport. As a kid growing up, I'd never had a time where I've just not been able to do anything. Um, and then thinking that I didn't have huge symptoms of huge headaches or anything, I thought, oh, it's all right, I'm going to be back pretty quickly. And, you know, people were saying this could take years, and I was like, yeah, no, but I'm okay, well, you know, relatively. And it's, yeah, it's just been a lot slower, and the, the symptoms have kind of lingered, even though we were with my coach, Julie Dibbons, who was amazing. Like we were really cautious at the start and, and did strip everything back and didn't start training again for a long time through. And then yeah. it was really low level stuff. But yeah, still kind of had to manage changes in fatigue levels, changing in energy levels, still getting headaches. Um, yeah, but I'm here. When something like that happens and you basically lose a part of who you are, Right, you're an athlete. That's what you do, but it's 
I always call these the invisible injuries. <laughs> and when Kat Matthews is sitting with us last year, she's got a neck brace on. You know what's going on. Yeah. So I'm sure people, you'd see them going, all right, Sid, you're looking great. I'm sure you'll be back. I don't see cast. I don't see any bracing. I don't see a sling. But head injuries are really scary. I, I think that was one of the hardest bits, that it was an invisible totally. injury. Yeah. And no one else can see it. And even... Me as myself, I didn't know what was normal and what wasn't normal. Like, is, you know, I'm also a 43 year old female. My hormones are all over the fucking place. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, you, it's funny. I'll tell you a story. I was doing the, um, they do like the concussion right. um, scan of mm -hmm. when I got back to Boulder. Bearing in mind, I haven't had like a baseline ever done. So you don't know then what you're comparing with. But they're saying, you know, the questions they ask, are you sleeping more? Well, yes, because you've told me I can't do anything. And so what else, you know, I'm resting, I'm lying on the sofa. So yes, I'm sleeping more. Um, what was the other one? Uh, are your emotions all over the place? Yes, I'm a 42 year old female at that time. 43 year old female. Yeah, I think I'm premenopausal kind of thing. You know, are you more irrational? Yes, stop fucking asking me questions. <laughs> you want to see irrational? <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I'll come back here. And my coach, Julie Dibbons, was with me, and she was just like, she was like, I was like, am I more irrational than usual? She was like, hmm, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Sorry for my language. Apologies. Not a problem. I love um, it. That's yeah. the best. That is very cool. So, yeah, so the invisible things have been pretty hard trying to explain, like, you're not rocking up wearing crutches or anything like that. And also just, yeah, you don't know what's normal, what's not normal, and that sort of managing things, and trying to explain to people, but then, yeah, trying to get on with life as well. And then la and when we look at back at last year, you're coming off a great season, yeah. right? You're coming off a seventh at Ironman World Championship St. George, 908, and then Kona, 907, right? So you're, you're having that type of your 10th in Kona, so you're thinking, okay, I'm getting... Yeah. I'm, I'm 43, but I'm getting better, yeah. right? You, you've been getting better for this last few years. How? Um, I, I'd have to say I owe a lot of that to Julie, Julie Dibbons, my yes. coach. Um, she's been amazing and given me a belief again and a confidence. She probably has more confidence in me than I do that I was still able to improve in certain areas and you know, I remember after St. St. George is, of course, in a race that suited me when the World Championships were there in May and obviously being early on in the year. So we were really excited about that. And coming seventh was just amazing. And then she just planted that seed saying, oh, wouldn't it be great to get two top tens at World Championships in the same, in the same year? year? Yeah. And I kind of looked at her <laughs> a little bit like, are you talking to the right person? You want to see me be irrational. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You want to see those hormones kick in? Um, and I would never have thought here in Kona that I would have achieved that, particularly with the women we have coming through the sport these days. And again, like last year being 42. And so holding on to that 10th place last year was just, uh, I mean, still, I think just those feelings. And to some extent, that's what's kept me going this year. Um, obviously wanted to come into this year, then building on right. last year and still feeling I could, uh, there's areas to improve and under Julie's, Julie's coaching. Obviously that took a bit of a, a different path when I was hit in May. Um, Ironman very kindly granted me a wild card to be here That's this great. year. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that. And I think Julie's got me into the best shape we can do in the circumstances. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, I just think I've still got I still feel like I've been in the sport this year now 10 years which was a bit of a shock and I'm actually if you look at the start list I am the second eldest on the list thank you Mel McQuaid Mel McQuaid's 50 Mel McQuaid's 50 and she's a rookie but the thing is if you look at statistical data you normally take the outliers out don't you so Mel McQuaid's like just disappeared because she's an outlier. Right. Okay. So I'm the oldest then. That's right. That oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way I would. That's I'm not the way sure I, I want to be bragging about that, but anyway. But then also, if you look at it, I this is my sixth year starting at the World Championships, which was funny because I still feel so new into the sport, and I was like, oh, actually, you're one of the oldest, and you've got one of the most starts. <laughs> but it's I think because I still feel so new and like working with Julie the last few years, I still feel there's so much to learn. And touch wood whilst 
I feel my body is still able to give and to train yeah. and I still enjoy it and I'm inspired by the the women coming through and this year being an all women's race and, and being able to be part of that like yeah I just think that's what keeps me going and is able to still in still improve a lot of times after something like this happens and and Cap Matthew was talking about racing with gratitude mm. because you know it could have been over right yeah. you, you could have died you could have been paralyzed there's so many other things that could have happened and just to be here, I'm guessing we'll see a big smile when you get to the finish line, no matter what the time is and no matter what the place is. Uh, yeah, I, I think so, and I hope so. I kind of hope that I, it's easy to sit about it and talk about it now. Like obviously when you get into race day and yeah, you're racing. you go through all those emotions and you hit those dark low patches and things and, I, and my, my uh, goalposts might move. But um, no, I really do hope, you know, I was talking to Tim O'Donnell, who's a training partner, and, and even Julie, like they've come into this races when they've had injuries just a few weeks out. And Tio is I like, yeah, you go in with a, like there's no expectation, there's no pressure, you've got nothing to lose. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be there almost because of what's happened. And right. so there's just this huge, yeah, gratitude and opportunity and, you know, coming into this race as well. We've tried a few different things because we thought we could go back and train how we have done before and we know it works, but we've got an opportunity to try some different stuff because we've got nothing to lose. Exactly. So I'm hoping that, yeah, I'll be in the water and I'll do a bit of a 360 spin and be able to take it all in with the volcano and all the crowds on the wall and the pier at the start and then shit myself as the gun goes. Um, <laughs> and then I hope then, yeah, those last kilometers on the Queen K and then back onto Alihi Drive, I, I know they're gonna hurt regardless, but hopefully wherever I am in the race, whatever, the, I mean, the, the day's about execution and putting out my, my best execution, but wherever that puts me, I hope that, yeah, I can run down Alihi Drive to the finish line and hopefully with that, with that smile, just be happy to be here and made it be back on the start line and have made it to a finish line well we're, we're so excited to have you back there was a, a lot of points this summer we were yeah. wondering as well as you sure. yeah. if you were going to be here racing and it's yeah. so cool to see you back thank you how about a round of applause for laura settle thank you. honcho man take us out it's aloha wednesday on a swim bike and run day and it's breakfast with Bob. Macho Man! <laughs>